Hey, hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me for another exciting episode of Illustration Masterclass here on Adobe Live. I'm glad you're all here with me today. And um, we're going to be doing something fun today. We're going to be looking at the importance of and uh, the rough sketch in the process um, of making an illustration. Now, this is something that um, oftentimes people will rush through the rough and what they wind up then doing is making a lot of work for themselves uh, towards the tail end um, of the process where really what you want to do is you want to kind of set yourself up for success by making a sketch that contains all the elements, all the ingredients that you need to make it so that when you get to the rendering phase or the final drawing phase, um, creating the final art, as we say, uh, when you get to that stage, you want things to just sort of fall into place. It's like you've already built this beautiful scaffolding and all you're doing is just, you know, replacing all of that bamboo. Um, and I say bamboo because I grew up overseas where the scaffolding was bamboo. Uh, but you're replacing that with um, the steel and the wood and the brick and everything. But uh, the framework's there. And the rough sketch is the bones. You need that. It's the scaffolding. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you by walking through a drawing myself today um, how I go about approaching that. And I'll be talking my way through it to give you some pointers so that when you are in that uh, phase with your own work, um, you can really make the most of it, take advantage of that time. So then the later parts of the illustration, the drawing and the painting where you're really trying to nail the final are much, much easier and more enjoyable for you, okay? Um, suddenly scalding hot in New England, says Linda, my goodness. Steve, how you doing? Nice to see you. Afroha's here. Hey, RB. Nice to see you as well. And Wade and Ryan Benoit. Nice to see you as well. Oliver, hi, hi, hi. Um, folks who are joining over here, I see uh, Anissa. Nice to see you as well. People are joining over here on Behance. That's be.net slash Adobe Live. So if you're joining me over there, thank you. If you're watching on YouTube, hello to you as well. And elsewhere, thanks for joining in. So let's uh, jump on over here to Photoshop. Um, here we are. Now, you'll notice that I have some reference up on the screen, and this is from the Granada production of um, Sherlock Holmes, 1984 to 1994, roughly. Um, these were, I think, the best ever interpretations of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes short stories and um, novels. And what I wanted to do today was imagine that Holmes and Watson, or maybe just Holmes, I think both of them, are, are stumbling on a body in a library. That's what I want to do. And I can't remember a single uh, book that I read or a short story I read, and I've read them all, where there was a murder in a library, although I could be wrong. Uh, there are quite a few stories. Um, but I just thought this was a great setting. You know, you find a body in there, whatever. Um, and what I wanted to do was have this vertical format, okay? And so this is the first thing I want to talk about with your sketch, of course, is you have to know the dimensions of your final art and make a decision about what that's going to be. Now, if you're in a really rough phase where you're just completely free to do whatever you like and you can play with format, then as you've seen in other master classes I've done, you can have a general idea for what you want to draw and then you can try it in different formats and see which one really works best. But I'm treating this sort of like an assignment where somebody has told me, maybe it's a magazine, maybe it's a Sherlock Holmes, um, you know, appreciation club somewhere. Uh, it could be anything, but they've said to me, we want to commission you to do this illustration. We want them to be finding a body in a, in a library. And the format for this, okay, the final printed size or size for however it's going to fit into our layout is fill in the blank and it's a vertical space like this. Okay, so knowing that going forward, you know, this is really important. Now I know what to work with and I can design my composition to work best within um, this aspect ratio, okay? Um, all right. Now, you'll see that I've also got some reference for myself here for costumes and whatnot. It's important for me not to get too busy and detailed and interested in all of these um, little uh, details of the outfits of the costumes that you see here. Um, but I do want them there so I see the general shape and understand how to draw those. Um, 
and then when I get to the final, of course, I'd be paying a lot more attention. But with the sketch, you know, just for me laying out the figures, I do want to just suggest what this clothing will look like and not just have a rectangle representing a torso. You know what I mean? Um, so these things are there for that reason. I'm not at all interested in likenesses. This is not a representation of these specific actors playing these parts. Um, but I do want to just have uh, the clothing there for myself. And then here I just have this very simple shot from Adobe Stock of the interior of an old English library. Okay. Um, and I really liked just how this looked and it's giving me information about the architectural style and the details of that architecture. Um, and then like how the bookshelves are designed and so on. Uh, the arrangement from shelf uh, to in between space where there's a seating area and little fold down. Um, I would say, uh, not desks exactly, but these little fold down uh, pieces of wood here where you could do some writing or whatever. All this stuff is stuff I could have maybe imagined, but by seeing it in a photo, it really, really makes a difference, and I'm going to get that a bit more accurate. All right, so we come to this phase now where we want to draw. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw with a pencil. Now, some people don't care about this stuff. It doesn't matter to them. It all depends on what makes you feel comfortable with the rough sketching process. If you started out your life drawing on paper, like many of us, um, with a pencil, and that's how you work out your ideas, well, if you're working in a digital environment, I think it's really great to try and replicate that. Um, now others, if you've started digital all your life and you use a hard round brush at a very small size and sketch that way, fine, that's, that's totally great. If you're used to sketching with a big chunky brush, they just block in big shapes, that's another way of working. And I've, I've shown you how to do that in some other live streams as well. It all comes down to what you're comfortable with. But for me, for today, I'm just going to use a pencil. And there are many options for this, of course. So those of you who have a Photoshop or Fresco subscription or any subscription, know that you have access to thousands of brushes, okay, created by yours truly. Thank you very much. And in order to access those, you want to come over here to your brushes panel. And you'll notice a little drop down menu here in the top right corner. Voila. And I have this option here, okay, to get more brushes. See that right there? Now, when you tap on get more brushes, it's going to launch a web page for you. And here you will see what that looks like, okay? Here I can go ahead and sign in. And when I sign in with my Adobe ID, I will see the newest release of brushes that's available to me, okay? And by next uh, week, you're gonna see that replaced with the spring 2023 brushes if you're in North America. Um, and then another week or two after that, it'll be worldwide. So brand new set for you. And this will get moved down to the bottom of the page. But here you have all these brushes that you can download and install in Photoshop, okay? And there's so, so many to play with. New ones coming out every quarter and occasionally for special um, projects as well. All right, so that's what that is. That's how you grab the brushes. Now, once you've got them installed, it's as simple as importing the ABR file. You download that file, you stick it wherever you want on your machine, okay? And um, you come over here and it's import brushes is what you wanna look for. And you just navigate to that file that you downloaded. It's a .abr file. You select that and it'll show up right here in your list, okay? How lovely is that? So um, today I'm just going to draw with a simple pencil. There's so many options in the Mega Pack, for example, that you can snag. So I'll just open that up. And here's the drawing box, which is already open. Um, you see we have some charcoal brushes and things like that, okay? Um, but I'm just go down, going down to the old um, perfect pencils. There are two of those. I'm gonna grab this one right here. Perfect pencil two. That's what I wanna draw with today. Okay, now, there you go, there's my pencil. Now if I zoom in, you will see that that has a nice pencil-y quality to it, right? And the reason I wanna draw with this is because it feels like I'm using a pencil on paper and that's what I'm trying to replicate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through a few roughs here, all right? And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm going to select this area right here, okay? And make a new layer. And I'm just going to take this selection, go to Select, Transform Selection, 
and I'm going to size that down so that I can fit a couple of ideas here in this space as thumbnails. So when we talk about doing a rough sketch, okay, um, one of the things that I find most useful is thumbnails for several reasons. The first of which is that I'm working very small and this limitation, okay, is forcing me to only think about big shapes and medium shapes. Because of the size of the area I'm working, I can't get into the nitty gritty, I can't get into the details. And this is really important because when you look at any picture from a distance, you want it to read clearly. And if you're starting out by getting obsessed with little tiny details here and there and everywhere, you're not thinking about the larger relationships in the composition, okay? And this is really important. So I like to start with some thumbs. So I'm gonna grab um, a gray color here, kind of a neutral gray. Option delete means I'm filling with my foreground color, like so. And uh, I might lighten that up just, up just a hair, okay? Lock that layer transparency using the backslash key, just underneath the, um, the question mark there on the keyboard. Uh, and then option delete again to fill that so it's a little lighter. Now, I'm using my move tool holding down the option key and dragging, holding down the shift key, and that gives me another separate little rectangle there to work with, all right? So we can try a couple of compositions here. Might even try a third. So let's see if we have time for that, for sure. All right, so moving on to the first one there. I'm gonna just make a selection there and draw inside of that selection right here on a new layer. If I want, I can also, instead of doing that, I can take this layer and I can clip it, hold down the option key, tap on the layer right here, and now everything I draw will be trapped inside of that frame. See that? So that's really handy. Alrighty, so let's think about a composition. Now, I described for you at the top of the show what I'm imagining, which is that Holmes and Watson are stumbling on a dead body. So we have different camera angles we can play with here. And the first one I wanna try is I wanna have this. I wanna do some feet right here in the foreground, okay? Foot, foot, and some legs, all right? And we're sort of down here at this angle. This is kind of our, our horizon line right here. Mm. Uh, and what I wanna do is I wanna have, all right, the bookshelf one of them right here. Okay, they see the edge of a bookshelf right here. And then I wanna have part of another one visible right here. All right, and we're gonna do this. We're gonna imagine that this is our point of view here. So we travel up this way. All right, that's our vanishing point for a one point perspective drawing. So I've got some feet here. Some legs. Right there. So these are in the these are in the foreground, right? One foot, another foot right there. And then what I want to have happen is I want Holmes and Watson to be appearing from here, okay? And shocked at what they're seeing right here. All right, so there we go. Now, because I have this reference here, I can see what the bookshelves look like, right? So I can just kind of quickly imagine what's going on there. All right, with those shelves. and some books. See that, that's all I do. I just throw those in there like that. So I'm not doing anything fancy. I can fill all that in. There's a sort of a shadow area underneath that shelf. Okay. We get the idea there. Um, so that's gonna read as a bookshelf. Maybe we got some like some molding down here or whatever and that's gonna be that bookshelf there 
And the reason I put the this line here is I'm just trying to think about like the height of an individual coming around the corner there. So we'll have homes right here and oh my gosh you know he's got his little magnifying glass there whatever coming around the corner his hand yikes Um, this foot stepping over, stepping around like this. The other leg bent and behind. Like wow, look at that. There's a there's a body there. Yeah 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 yeah. Horrible horrible stuff. Okay. Um. And Watson could be peeking out his head from this side. All right, so we have a sort of a nice triangular thing, uh, triangular thing going on here. So we've got Watson here. Oh dear. One hand here, so that the body, the position, uh, pose is different from Holmes. Okay. Now, thank goodness for this reference because I can see these interesting. I think they're called eaves, right, in the ceiling. And um, what I can do is I could throw a little post right here, and maybe that curves around, and then arcs up towards the ceiling there. And then we have this area back here. And there's that suggestion of these areas in the ceiling here, right? And it doesn't have to be exactly what you see there, but you know, and then shape of a window here is nice just to frame Watson right there okay so there you go there is one sketch idea so the body's here I didn't really put much detail in the shoes, doesn't matter, we're just trying to get an idea. Now because of how small I'm drawing, alright, because of the scale of all this, look what you're left with. You're left with, um, you know, and for this whole area here, that should all just be dark. And the beautiful thing is I can take this brush and just size it up huge, like this, using the, um, the right bracket key. And I can just knock in a big dark shadow like that and I can be more picky with these dark areas like this too. And the window back there. Etc. Maybe there's some shadows up here. Um, I can add a bit of tone here to Sherlock. I don't want to get super into like the the values and stuff, but it's just nice to be able to quickly suggest some stuff like that. All right, so now I can look at that from a distance, really nice and small. I don't want that to be too small for you all who are watching on the screen. Um, but uh, hopefully this helps you to see how what I'm doing, right, is I'm really carefully, and, and I'm noticing right now that, you know, if this bookshelf ends here, his feet can't be here. 
So this is why you sketch. This is why you do this stuff. Hold down the uh, bracket key, uh, the um, tilde key there just to erase really quickly with the same brush. And that helps me to get that right. There we go. And maybe some suggestion of like some floorboards to help uh, with establishing our, oops, point of view there is really going to help push things back, create that illusion of depth, okay? So there you go. Now, again, um, there's some detail in here, but honestly, not much, right? Now I can be like really, really careful with these silhouettes. Check this out, I can do this kind of thing. This helps me really see my shapes. Like that. There's Holmes. There is Watson. Just gonna outline those. There's that bookshelf. Get these nice and clear. And here is uh, the victim. Okay. Make sense? All right, so let's see here. Do you enlarge the thumbnail for the final sketch or just do over? I always enlarge it, Umicorn, and then I refine from there. I, I want, you know, I, if I get things right with the thumbnail, I don't want to have to try and redraw it and then wind up accidentally like placing something incorrectly, you know, not getting it quite where it was. Um, there's no reason not to go ahead and enlarge that thumb and then refine from there. I think that's a, a really good habit. Totally recommend it. So to answer that question. Um, and let's see here. Um, yeah, Steven says the same thing. It's the simple things you forget about, says Derek. I always jump in without the prep, like thumbnails. Yeah, Derek. If you can avoid skipping that step, highly recommend it. Thanks for the compliment about the brushes, Peter. Appreciate it. Um, hi, Stony. Thanks for joining us. All right. So let's see here. Um, any other questions? Wade says I usually enlarge and then make decisions as I work on top. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm, same here. You like the shading, adding a sense of volume. Yes. Need a pool of blood by the victim. So says Peter, sure, you could totally have a little blood there. That, that would be a good addition for sure. Um, but there you have a thumbnail. Okay, now this is a really important step. So uh, that's one idea. There's one composition. Now we have these two other spaces we can work with. We can think about some other camera angles, some other ways we could do this, right? So one idea, of course, is to just reverse this, reverse it. All right, and we can still have this low angle, right? We can still have this uh, low, whoops, let me come up here. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and clip another layer there. Okay, there we go. And I can draw in here now. Um, we can still do this low angle. We can have that same horizon line if we want, okay? Um, only this time what we're going to do is we're going to set the body back here, okay? And we're going to have Holmes and Watson, I think, uh, in basically the same configuration. Um, I'm going to put Holmes here, but I want his, his head to be about this big right here. Okay, and he's, he's looking at, at Watson. 
and he's got this, you know, his his little hat there, his little Holmes hat, whatever that is. I can't remember what these things are called. These these caps that he, he wears. Um, it's a name for him. Anyway, there's there's Holmes. Um, and then Watson, right here. Kind of looking more towards the body. And surprised. So we'll have the arm out like this. Stepping forward. And uh, we'll have this time a little, a little cue for everybody where Holmes will be pointing at the body. So I'll change this a little bit here. Still got the magnifying glass in his hand and the long coat there. And this will be our vanishing point right there. So again, we're doing a nice single vanishing point. Okay, one point perspective. And we'll throw the, the bookcase right here and have that come this way. Okay, so there's a bookcase right there. And um, we'll have another one here. See this one down here. Okay, so we're gonna be like that. Make sure these are, whoops, the same height. There we go. So we want that to be here. So that's where that one's gonna be. We see home stepping out. Like this. And we got some extreme foreshortening there as he's pointing towards the body. And then here, notice by the way, I'm zooming out when I draw. I'm not getting close, but now I'll get a little closer. But it's just important to me, I don't wanna have, a zoomed in uh, point of view here, because what I wanna do is be able to um, draw small and not get into details. So this time we have the body here, okay? So we just see the feet sticking out. So different from this, okay? We're more sort of seeing things from the point of view of Holmes and, uh, and Watson, okay? In fact, I'll give Watson a shorter coat so as to not have it feel too much like um, Like he's got the same shape as as uh, Holmes there, okay? All right. So this is a nice little open space here. We go here. And this will be this shape. We'll 
one step forward a bit more like this. And there's our bookshelf there. And we can throw the, you wanna watch out for tangents. If you don't know what tangents are, they're, they're areas where you'll have a line that connects to another line. You gotta be careful. You know, I might wanna set this even higher, maybe up here, if you have like a really high ceiling, just to avoid any tangents. Talked about those before and they are dangerous. <laughs> now what we could have here if we want is a little low shelf of books, you know, just to kind of make this space a bit more interesting. Also gives us some scale. Okay, so there's our little low shelf back there. We can design these later, um, but just generally we know that there's some detail up there and then the actual shelf. Uh, the books and stuff starts up like this. So there's some books right there. But notice I always mark the horizon, I mark the vanishing point. This is so that I can at least estimate decently um, the perspective because I do not want to fake that to the point where it screws me up later when I'm trying to draw the real stuff. Okay? Do not skip that step of setting yourself up. It also, I mean, honestly, makes everything go faster. You know, once I once I got that stuff set up, I don't have to like think about it too much later, right? So there we go. All right. Um, we did not look in the re in the reference for how the lights are. We see a light right there, but it's difficult to really see the design of that. We see sunlight. You know, there was no real lighting in the ceiling at the time. That wouldn't have been a thing. We have to imagine that. Um, there, you know, they might be holding a candle or something like that for light. We don't know. Maybe there is some light here. Could be a candle there, could be a candelabra, whatever. We don't know. All right. Could be some lights here, some candles, etc. Um, Figure those things out. We could have the window here, so it could be that these guys are, you know, this could be a daytime thing. It doesn't have to be nighttime. Not everything has to be nighttime. So you could have uh, a window here. And what we get is some, um, some nice silhouetting, because it's backlighting, right? Where we have Watson and Holmes lit fairly darkly here, because the light is hitting the front of their figures, right? So this could be more of the situation here. And that might help things read as big shapes. Okay, silhouettes there. So we think about this and we say, yeah, that, that's looking pretty good. That knocks all this stuff into shadow, right? Okay. Shadow, shadow. Okay. 
Okay. So this is the result of that um, little idea right there. So you have from this point of view and now from this point of view. So we've just flipped things around, all right? That's what we've done, we flipped it. Think of all those flames around those books, says Jane. Yeah, I think a lantern's better, Peter. Agree, agree, agree. Um, I don't know what a deer stalker is, Umicorn. What is that? Is that some kind of a light or something? I don't know. Hi, Bruce. Happy Friday to you as well. Um, you'd love to see finished versions of these, says Jane. So would I. <laughs> Jane, I would love to see those as well. Unfortunately, with everything else I have to do in my life, um, I probably won't get around to, to doing that, but you never know, you never know. Um, so there we have two ideas, right? Number one, number two, we flip them around, we get some, some results there. Um, and again, as with this one, if you wanna increase that sense of depth, you can always, because we have our vanishing point right there, we can just very easily draw, you know, the floorboards. Heading towards us, imagining that they're running this direction. Um, and that does help to push things towards our victim there, right? It just gives you the, we have a diagonal here. It's kind of picked up by the diagonal of his arm. And um, we, we interrupt these verticals with this horizontal. Everything just kind of frames that and it works. And, um, you know, here we look to their faces and because the feet are in the middle, we go boom, boom, and because the feet are in the extreme foreground, of course, we're gonna notice them. So everything compositionally, it's working out. Um, there's some other things we could do, but what we're trying to do with thumbnails is just get the bigger pieces into place move them around to where they should be. So that's like moving puzzle pieces till you get to something that looks pretty decent. Um, and then you can, from there, build your rough. Uh, so now, um, should we do a third or should we take one of these to a more refined state? Well, it's uh, 3 8 and we've only got another 20 minutes together. So my thinking is that we take one of these and, and work it up a little bit. So I ask you, um, if we were to do this, this is A and this is B. I, I leave it to you in the chat. Tell me, which of these two should we work on a little bit and, and play with? What do you think? Which one is kind of working for you? You tell me. That's why these are live. Oh, the Sherlock Holmes hat is what that's called. A, a deer stalker. Oh, I never knew that. How about that? Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, yes, Tina. Thank you. In the books, he does not wear one, says Stephen. Uh, yeah, I never heard it mentioned. You're right. Sure, wherever the, the Sherlock Holmes fans are who want to commission me to do some drawing, go ahead and give me a call. Oh, look at this. Dr. Watson describes him as wearing his ear-flapped traveling cap. Well, how about that? All right, let's see here. We have a vote for B, a vote for A, a vote for B, a vote for A, a vote for A. Whoops, A is winning. A is winning. So maybe we're gonna move on with A. Should we move on with A? Uh-oh, another B came in. That's three Bs and three As. Folks, well, you know what? I'm just gonna take that to mean that both of my sketches are very successful and nobody can decide between the two. Um, now, if it were up to me, I don't know. 
you know, I'm kind of torn as well, but I'm... Ah, oh, gosh. This is tough. Surprise. B is winning on YouTube, says Wade. Ah, okay, that's good to know. And B from Bruce. So B is right now a C, says Oliver. Good one. All right, looks like looks like B is edging out A. So here we go with B. Let's do it. All right. So we take sketch B. We merge those layers. And we hide the rest. Okay. And what we do is we take that and we simply stick it in the corner. Hold down the shift key. I'm using the legacy transform. And we enlarge it so that it fits that space. And there is our sketch. Voila. Now normally you don't cut people's feet off like this. Um, but I think in this case it's actually not hurting it. So it doesn't bother me to be honest. Um, just leave it like that. And what we do is, of course, we knock it back. We say, throw it to 20% opacity or something like that. And we select it. And once again, I can make a new layer. And I can decide that this is going to be the area I draw in. But this time, I'm actually going to use a mask. So I'm going to tap on the little mask the bottom of my layers panel. And that means that the white area of the mask right here is what's visible. And once again, when I draw, you'll see that I can draw and then whoops, it's going to be hidden as I carry off the picture plane there. Okay, so that's very, very nice. I'm gonna switch over to um, the animator pencil. Let's do that. So come here you, there you are. Switching over to the animator pencil to draw. I'm going to knock my sketch back just a hair of it. There we go. And now I can get a better look at some of the elements that I think are important. I'll get I'll get to those, but first I just want to refine the bodies a little bit. Now this is another thing about sketching is if you've got people wearing clothing, my advice is to ignore that for a minute and just think about the bodies. Okay. So here, for example. All right, just to keep things simple, point of articulation, point of articulation, uh, point of articulation. This is where I'm gonna have the hand holding the magnifying glass, okay? First thing I wanna do is I actually take my hand and I look at my own hand and I pretend I'm holding a magnifying glass, okay? If I had one, I'd hold it, but just doing this and, and just gesturing, I can sort of feel like what it feels like to hold a magnifying glass and what that is. Um, and I can see that my hand dips like so, thumb is there, fingers wrap around, and magnifying glass is here. That's a more accurate sort of grip for that, okay? Bum 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 So that, that is more what I would do with my hand, okay? That's important for me to, to do these things. Um, shoulder there, imagining the rib cage there, okay? I'm not gonna draw like a whole skeleton or anything, but I just wanna kinda get a sense of how to pose this, um, this body here. Spine there. All right, and one leg. Coming forward, zing, 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 and there, another in the back, drop that knee, and I can take that off, like so. Um, there's a twist happening here so that what we have is kind of want to angle the head a bit more so we see the back of the skull there, head turning away from us. We 
you get a, a sort of a one quarter view, if you will. So you get three quarter view, this is gonna be more like a one quarter view. Okay, so then the ear right there. And that hat, we look at how that hat sits. So come up, over and down in the back right there. Some flappy doodles right there. Flappity flap. And uh, collar is quite, quite big. So now you can see I can start to think about the clothing a little bit, right? Shoulder there. Sort of um, designing it around. That sort of skeletal structure there that I drew. Okay, there's that big fat collar. And the rest of the coat's gonna hang down like this, and then it's gonna there's gonna be a big break in it here where the leg comes forward and then the coat will break again here and then hang down here like that as this leg comes forward there. That's what we're gonna do right there. Okay, and then I got that hand holding the magnifying glass. Which I might angle down a little bit. I could also angle it up. Depends on what I do with this other arm. So now I know the shoulder is here and the arm's pointing away from us. Elbow here using x-ray vision. Arm pointing out that way. And then that's where I want that sleeve to end right there, right there. So some more extreme foreshortening than what I have in the sketch. Um, and if this hand gets too close to the other, I can always do this, take this, bend it a bit more, throw it down here. And that solves that problem. I may want to bend that arm a little bit. Just have a little bend right there. And then we have that hand pointing at the body like so. And we could angle this up this and just change the angle of that hand slightly so that that just fits like this. Okay. Shoulder coming forward a bit more. get rid of all this nonsense here so that we make that one big shape there. And what I can do now is get rid of anything there that I don't need. There's that break. And this is how I'm gonna work it out. See that? So I wanna make sure I got that line of action ding, towards our target. Okay. Have a bit of hair there. 
There's that ear. I can get in there now. Get a bit more specific with some of this stuff. I gotta make sure I change my eraser to something useful. I'm gonna go here to the, um, in the drawing box, uh, in the erasers, excuse me, this natural edge eraser. So that will play nicely with pencil. See that? It's got a bit of a more natural rubber eraser kind of a feel to it, if you will. Okay. There's that nose poking out. And that feels pretty good. Get that ear back just a bit like that. Bump, 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 bump. So you see how I do this? This is this is just a lot of a lot of long lines, okay? Lines that have a lot of energy, a lot of action, trying to just make things feel that they're not too static. That's boring because it's a circle. What do we do? We make it a... more of an ellipse. Turn that, we angle that. Okay, that's a better angle. This whole, this whole inter, this whole thing here where we're going, um, whoops. For some reason the brush went to the eraser. I'm not sure how that happened. That's a weird phenomenon. There we go. Um, something about this though, like this is what happens. You get to this stage and you start playing and you go, wait a second. Something about this area here with those two things feels kind of stacked. And I don't want that. And you have to figure out how to solve that problem. Um, so you have choices, you have options. You know, one thing you can do is you can take this arm and you can throw it up a bit like this. And uh, I gotta make sure I have those flaps there, which I'll, they're gonna be partly visible there. But you could throw that arm more out towards here, so the elbow's there, right? And you could drop it in, so it's got its own foreshortening situation happening here. Okay, so it's coming out towards us and then away from us. And then you could angle that hand. this and have the uh, magnifying glass something like that you know that might be a better way to do that see what I mean That might be the way to go there. That way this arm gets its own sort of space in which to live and um, does more of its job there. See what I mean? All right, well, um, who's leaving? Someone's leaving. Oh, bye, Peter. Have a good weekend. Tricky angles is Tina. Fearless Kyle, yeah, fearless, fearless. You know what it is? It's just a ton, a ton of like working and reworking. That's all it takes, gang. Work, rework, work, rework. All right, so you're getting the concept here, right? We went from a thumbnail to now we refine this sketch. Now I would spend another couple hours doing this. And of course we don't have the time right now, but just to quickly show you, I would then knock that back and over the top of that, 
Okay. Look, this is where I start to go and say, all right, let's get that shape right. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And we start to really play around with getting things exactly as they should be. And that's where it gets really fun. This is where now we feel like we've got things just kind of falling into place. Okay, see, that's, that's what you're striving for. That's that magic place where you've already done a lot of the heavy work to get things where they need to be, okay? And now you can have fun and you can just refine, refine, refine until eventually you're heading towards the finish line, right? But it, this is, it's a process. And you do not want to skip parts of the process because you'll always pay the price. All right, but you see how that's gonna work right there? That's how it goes, gang. Don't skip steps, don't skip steps, don't skip steps. Have a great weekend. Thank you for joining me, hope you had fun. And I wanna say, as always, to take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Please remember to be kind and I'll say ciao for now.